sorry, to introduce this really important initiative to expand the access to light sheet imaging in Latin America. Before we introduce our first speaker, I would like to invite you to watch a short video message from the president of Universidad Mayor, Patricio Manque, who was unable to join us today. In the last 10 years, Universidad Mayor started uh, this path to become a research university. And one of our focus has been uh, to develop scientific platforms such as um, DNA sequencing, fax, uh, animal models, and more recently imaging. So our scientists can solve their questions using a variety of tools to provide them with the more deep answers to their fundamental questions. Uh, this facility will certainly help us uh, to provide uh, with the opportunity to uh, continue to enchant our undergrad students uh, to become scientists and with the beauty of science and help us to better train our PhDs and postdocs. Uh, finally, with this facility, we hope to, to help to build a strong scientific community for our country and I look forward to see all of the development uh, that will come from, uh, from, from this and I wish you a very good uh, meeting this morning. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to introduce our speaker, Leonardo Valdivia, Assistant Professor at the Center for Integrative Biology and Academic Director of the Zebra Fish Hub. Thanks very much, Anna. Um, I would like to, can you see that? That the recent the slide. Yes. Okay. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Um, this is a big pleasure to be here today, um, introducing this um, the funding grant. So, I have been uh, a member of the Center of Integrative Biology since 2017. So, more recently, since uh, 2021, I have been the academic director of the Zebrafish Research Hub, which is focused on, on promoting the zebrafish as a biomedically oriented um, model. So particularly in my lab, we are interested in understanding how eyes take shape during development. For that goal, uh, we have been awarded like many, many Chilean grants. And today I will tell you briefly about the community grant that we got like a couple of years ago that will benefit the whole CIV, um, the university and beyond. And this is the funding grant. Um, and this grant enabled the CIV and the university to obtain a state-of-the-art uh, uh, light sheet microscope the, sorry, I'm just gonna find my pointer here. Um, to obtain that state of the art, the art uh, size light sheet seven microscope. And so this piece of equipment uh, will be instrumental for the Lysium initiative that we are presenting today and for which I'm a co-PI. So I'm not gonna tell you details about the microscope because we have Francisca Klein who, uh, from SAIS, who is an expert in this technology and will tell us more about it. So um, the CIV comprises a, a number of researchers we, who study development and function of the nervous system, the causes of neurodegenerative diseases, metagenomic uh, analysis, cancers, um, cell death, uh, among many others. So in addition at the CIV, we have strong collaborative bridges with other academic units within the same university, including the Center for Genomics and Bioinformatics. So all of this research that I mentioned is carried out uh, in model organisms, including uh, zebrafish, Gamedaca, Rosophila mouse, Arabidopsis, among many others. And this diversity of models within the Universidad Mayor is very good. And as you can say, the more the merrier. And it represents a unique opportunity to open entirely new windows into the inner dynamics of cells. So as a natural consequence of the diversifying these model systems, we need to adopt novel technologies. And the study of development and function of organs in health and disease and the complexity of uh, multicellular uh, organisms requires a level of microscopy that allows to dive into the inner life of cells to document aspects of them for long period of times. So um, we can do that in three dimensions and without collateral damage affecting the health of it and the stability of the sample. And that's the, the, main, the main focus of this uh, FONDEQ grant that comes to, to fill um, this need. So before um, going on like with details, I would like to just show you the people 
um, that are supporting the grant or make this possible, okay? So um, because this is a unique microscope uh, that is nowhere else in South America, it will benefit a number of researchers at uh, Universidad Mayor in, in our country and also in, in South America. And this is perfect for exploiting um, the model system that I mentioned before, okay? So before going into details, I need to just make a very, very strong statement and thanks uh, to Joaquin and Ramon for, for just, we were working together for just um, uh, making this, this application for this, uh, this funding grant uh, a couple of years ago. So uh, they were very helpful on, on helping to crystallize this idea for this funding application. So that being said, um, in this world map that I'm showing you here, we can see that people who are involved in this uh, grant. So we have a massive community of people from Chile, as you can see here, in particular from Universidad Mayor. And even if I'm showing you only the center of Chile here, uh, we also have supporters that are not only from Santiago, but also from Valparaíso, Concepcion, and Valdivia. Okay, so um, and beyond Chile, um, we have some, some other supporters like uh, Dr. Ed Malagatrillo from um, Universidad Cayetano Heredia in, in Peru, and Dr. Flavio Solesi from uh, Universidad de la República in, in Uruguay. Um, so as you can see, all these grants will benefit in like uh, a bunch of people from, from South America. But we also have the support from, from labs that are experts in this technology including Professor Steve Wilson from the Department of Cell and Developmental Biology of University College London, and also um, Professor Ulrich Kubitschek from um, University of Bonn. So both of them are just very experts in these, in these imaging technology. So we are uh, pretty sure that we will make major breakthroughs with the support of these important people in the field. So um, at the bottom, I'm just showing you um, the kind of models that we will use for, for just bumping up these, these grants. So we will, I mean, most of the users uh, will use um, um, fish embryos. We are very suitable for these um, 3D or, or live imaging applications, but also um, some people will use mice and Arabidopsis, tumors, C. elegans, uh, organoids, and also beetles. Um, and even if I'm not showing you here, I mean, there is a, a group of people that are interested in, on exploiting light sheets uh, for, for uh, expansion micros microscopy, which is something that will be, be very, very instrumental for, for us in the center, but also in the, in the university. So as you can see, this is a great opportunity for democratizing like the access to imaging technologies. Um, Finally, well, I'm just gonna tell you, I'm uh, gonna show you just briefly about our new toy. As you can see, this is the crate in which um, we got the microscope. Um, as I told you at the beginning, we got this grant in 2019, like a couple of years ago, but after, well, because of the pandemics, of course, we couldn't bring the microscope into our country uh, until very recently, only a few weeks ago. So this is the crate in which this arrived. So this is very similar to when we, we saw the Tasmanian evil or devil for when when it was in the crate. So we hope that when we unbox that, we will hit the, the similar impact to this guy was doing in, in, in Looney Tunes. Um, this is the microscope already installed. As you can see, it's a very unusual microscope because you don't see the, the, the oculars, you just look at the samples. So there is a, it's a sort of box. And it's, it's very different to, to the normal microscope that we use in, in the SIP or any other uh, universities in our country. And um, finally, this is like people just um, yeah. obtaining the first images. Uh, and there you can see um, Camila and, and Aaron Villanueva from, from my lab. So they were the first people that just together with Ramon on looking at samples that were just suitable for these light sheet applications. So at the bottom, you can see like a real image. And this is one of the first things that we, we obtained, or in this case, Camila obtained that, that image. Um, and this is just the, the data. This is very preliminary, as, you, as, you, as I told you at the beginning. Uh, this just arrived a few, few weeks ago. So we are still trying to understand how to use it. But um, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be OK. Um, you can see here in green, there is a transgenic zebrafish, and you can see that there is a nice 3D view that we can get from these uh, zebrafish larvae, okay? In red, you can see the axonal tracts. 
And on the right, you will see um, that you can even go, even, um, go deeper into, into the inner secrets of, the, of, the, of this embryo. Indeed, we can just go inside the embryo itself. So um, as I told you, this is just very preliminary, but we hope that with this kind of approach, we will be able to make major breakthroughs on understanding how animals take shape. Or, I mean, in my case, I mean, there, there are many other people that are interested in other models, but I guess this is the very preliminary data that we, we gather from, from Severfish. And um, before um, taking questions, if there is any, or maybe we can just have it at, at the end, <clears throat> I would like to just uh, say thanks to, to the fund, the Keep Heroes. <laughs> And, and again, uh, I, I would like to thank Dr. Joaquin Leterrier and Dr. Ramon Ramirez because we were working together to, to crystallize this idea for this fund uh, grant application and that was actually successful. And also Dr. Felipe Kurt because of making the links between like normal people as us and, and the people from, from finance in the university. Ignacio Velázquez from Microx Chile, who, who imported the microscope and, and recently installed the, the machine. And all our supporters like from, from Chile and, and, and abroad. And especially, well, in the people from, from my lab, especially Camila who, and Aaron, uh, especially Camila, I would say, because she has been like uh, pushing for using this technology and she, she has been just obtaining the first images, as I told you. I would like to also thank the Fonde Keep uh, grant that we got for this, but also I, I would like to thank the university because this was a 50 and 50 effort uh, it, it was a huge monetary effort uh, that was uh, made possible just working together with Fondekid. So um, I would like to like to thank to all these people and of course to all of the people that are connected. Uh, and if you have any question, I can just take it at the end of this uh, webinar. Thanks very much. Thanks Leonardo for your presentation. Our next speaker is Alen Talovi, Assistant Professor at the Center for Integrative Biology and Academic Director of the Microscopy Hub. Alenka, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anna. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today and for your interest in light sheet microscopy. Um, hold on, I forgot to share the screen. Okay, um, so my name is Alenka Levy. I'm an assistant professor here at the Center for Integrative Biology um, and the academic director of the Microscopy Hub. And I want to talk to you um, about the light sheet imaging at Universidad Mayor or Lithium Initiative. So, can you see my slide? Okay, now it's sharing. So, uh, this initiative is possible because, in part, because of the Chan Zuckerberg initiative. So I just want to tell you a little bit um, about them. They found uh, they were founded in 2015 to help eradicate disease, improve education, and with a mission to build a more inclusive, just, and healthy future for everyone. And on November 15th this year, they announced more than five million dollars to advance bioimaging technologies increase the access to these tools and build capacity for biomedical researchers. And uh, 11 projects were awarded in Latin America and our project was one of those. Um, so our team consists of um, myself, Felipe Court, um, the director of the Center for Integrative Biology and Leonardo Valdivia, who you just heard from. Um, and uh, Ramon Ramirez, who's the manager of the Microscopy Hub. And so we aim to bring together all interested light sheet users and become a reference center for light sheet microscopy in Latin America. So our specific aims are to organize conferences, workshops, and seminars, uh, to maintain a remote facility, to learn to build light sheet microscopes and pass along this knowledge, and also to provide extra light sheet microscopes for educational purposes. Um, so I'm just gonna go through uh, some of these aims. Um, we're in the process of building our research network 
So please uh, get in touch with us if you have um, ideas or techniques you want to share. Um, our web page is in construction, but right now, if you go to lightsheetchile.cl, uh, you'll see a form uh, which you can fill out and be added to our email list. And I think shortly we will have much more information there. And you can always reach out to me directly. Um, we encourage you to come visit our facility, uh, but if you cannot, we will also operate as a remote facility. So you can ship your samples here and we can image them, or you can even try to image them remotely. The software should allow it um, to see if this technology uh, can help you. It's uh, really, really fast. So it's an excellent technology. Um, in terms of building the light sheet microscope, we will be collaborating with Dr. Wiskin and Michael Weber. So Dr. Wiskin um, in sort of came up with this flamingo design of a microscope. And the flamingo is a modular system um, with a relatively small footprint and can be optimized for different configurations. Um, but also it can travel around more easily than most microscopes. So we thought this would be an excellent one to learn how to build. Um, and for this purpose, we will have an opening for a postdoctoral student position. So the postdoc will work at the interface of optical engineering, biology, and image analysis, and work with our collaborators in Germany. So there'll be some travel involved um, between Chile and Germany. Um, and collaborations with Dr. Hiskin's laboratory and also with uh, Dr. Ulrich uh, Kubitschek, who's been building his own systems as well. And um, lastly, we, uh, with the support of Mycroft's Chile, Zeiss, and Flamingo, we hope to bring in uh, extra light sheet systems to coincide uh, with the teaching of this developmental biology course. It's organized by Dr. Roberto Mayor. Um, uh, so that we increase our capacity to be able to image all these lovely uh, model organisms that are studying the development of biology, but also um, to have a larger capacity so that you can come visit and plan some experiments and get some work done. So this course has been postponed uh, until next year. So hopefully we'll have enough time to organize everything. So with that, I'd like to thank uh, Universidad Mayor and the Center for Integrative Biology, the Fonde Kip Grant and Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, uh, Zeiss and Microx Chile for allowing the growth of Lithium. And I look forward to working with all of you uh, in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Alenka. Mm -hmm. Before we continue, I would like to remind you that at the end of the webinar, there will be a Q&A session. So please type your questions into the Q&A panel or the chat box. Now, I would like to introduce Ignacio Velázquez, General Manager of Microx Chile and Official Distributor of Size Microscopy. Hello, everybody. Good morning. I hope you can see my screen now and you can hear me clearly. Sorry if there is any noise at the background. My, my daughter is running around, so could be some interruption. So thank you for the introduction. Um, as was already said, I'm the general manager of Microx Chile, and we are, we are the official distributor of uh, size microscopy in Chile. And we work together with the Universidad Mayor for, for uh, uh, this project and also for the, for the new uh, Chan Zuckerberg Initiative uh, funding. But I want to talk to you a little bit in, in regards of uh, the light chip technology. Maybe some people already know about it, but I will explain just briefly. So just a, as a recap, uh, we, we all know about the microscopy and the normal microscopy works like this, where when we have uh, fluorescence, we illuminate the sample and then uh, using some kind of uh, filters, we can separate the, the fluorescence uh, emitted light from the excitation light, and then we collect the light in, 
in a camera-based system, uh, like in a standard microscope. And then uh, we all know confocal microscopy that is a really useful tool for, for research. Uh, in, in this case, we use a laser to illuminate the sample. And then using some kind of filters, uh, we can separate the light from the laser to the light from the sample, so the fluorescence. And then using uh, a component uh, called a pinhole, we can, uh, we can optically section the sample, so avoiding all the light from out of focus uh, positions. So with this uh, technology, we can improve the capacity of uh, sectioning in, in, in three di dimensions uh, inside of the sample. But all the, all the evolution of microscopy across the years is always going uh, pointing to, to more resolution. So uh, being able to see a smaller and a smaller structures, but uh, going this way uh, is limiting a little bit the, the, the possibility to, to observe uh, bigger samples or, or animals. And in, in the other way we have, the, when we see the, the, the whole organism or the whole uh, organ, we have much higher uh, physiological re relevance of the data. So this is the, 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 the problem that is also solved, solved by, by this technology that allow us to, to see much bigger samples, but also keeping the, the possibility to, to, to make optical sections. So this is more or less how it works. In epilumination, that is uh, the normal white field microscope and also the the confocal, we illuminate from the observation objective and we detect the fluorescence from the same side. So we are illuminating the, the whole uh, volume of the sample, but the light chip, uh, technology uh, is completely different and we illuminate the sample from the side and we uh, make the detection or we observe the sample from from 90 degrees regarding to the illumination and in this way we are able to illuminate only the the focus plane that is uh, is actually in focus so the the technique is already uh, optical sectioning and we don't need the the pinhole and some other components that are inside of a confocal microscope to to make it a uh, optically se section. So this technique already allows this uh, optical sectioning and something that is even more re relevant for, for living samples is that when we use confocal microscopy, for example, or, or any other white field microscope, we illuminate the whole sample, but only uh, we need to, to detect or to digitalize the focus part of the sample. But the bleaching and the photo damage is uh, affecting the whole animal in this case. And when we use the, the light sheet technology, we are illuminating only the focal plane. And in this way, we are uh, reducing the photo damage and reducing the photo bleaching uh, uh, really dramatically. And also uh, having the possibility to, to observe much bigger samples because of the of the way the, the system is illuminating the sample. And how we create this, we, we use a illumination optics that is, uh, is in 90 degrees uh, regarding to the observation. And we use laser uh, light source. And in the combination with, a, in this case, cylindrical lens, we create this uh, sheet of light that is projected uh, through the sample and will create the light sheet. So in this way, we, we have a completely different architecture of the microscope to be able to, to use light sheet technology. And with this, I will uh, uh, let you with, uh, with uh, Francisca Klein from SAIS, who will explain you more in detail about our technology. And just to point something out, uh, as Leonardo already explained that they, they they built the, the, the Fondeki project around the light sheet set one model from size, but 
uh, from the time the project was uh, was written and to the time the the, the, the project was funded uh, we launched a new model so they they already have the 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 newer uh, version of the light sheet from from size uh, that is the light sheet 7 system and francisca will explain you now more in detail about this new model thank you everybody Thanks to Ignacio Velázquez. Next, I would like to introduce Francisca Klein from the Global Application Support Team at SAIS Research Microscopy. Many things. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Go into presentation mode. Here we go. So, thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, yeah, my name is Franziska Klein and I'm an application specialist based in Jena in Germany. Uh, the title of my talk is Size Light Sheet 7, Multi-View Imaging of Live and Cleared Specimen. There is nothing more straightforward um, than observing uh, living organisms or over a long period of time. And as you watch the time lapse of this developing Prosophila embryo, Think about what technical hurdles need to be addressed to generate a data set like this. First of all, there's the sample. So we need to be able to gently handle the specimen without squishing it in between glass plates or even section it physically. Um, another thing is um, we want to have maybe the ideal viewing perspective. So that means we need to be able to position the sample to image from a certain orientation. Then we need to be able to um, create optical sections that Ignacio explained already before. So uh, we just want to see um, the information in the image plane and not the blur above and below. Then we need to also address speed. So we want to image very quickly for sufficient spatio-temporal resolution in order to observe highly dynamic processes in 3D. And last but not least, also mentioned by Ignacio, there's um, the, the problem of photo damage. So we need to minimize photo bleaching and photo damage in order to keep the sample happy and alive over a long period of time. So let me explain on the following slides how we addressed all of those challenges and realized this data set that you see here on the light sheet seven. Okay, the principle behind light sheet fluorescence microscopy was already explained, but let me uh, maybe go a little bit more into detail how this looks on your uh, system that you own right now. Um, so what you see here, this is um, the sample, this is the chamber that is built around and um, the sheet of light um, is coming in from the side. So it's a horizontal microscope with separated illumination and detection from behind. And um, the sample is il illuminated from the side, left and right, and the light sheet itself, itself is shaped by a cylindrical lens. And um, this covers one third of the field of view and by scanning the light sheet up and down, we cover the entire field of view. And uh, by moving the stage, during image acquisition, we can collect an optically sectioned 3D data stack. So let's have a quick detour into the history of LightSheet. The first LightSheet was described in 1903 by Henry Siedentopf and Richard Sigmondi. They used the ultra microscope to visualize nanoparticles in cranberry glass. In 1912, Sigmondi further improved on the design to study suspended particles in defined fluidic volumes, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1925. Um, over the next century, light sheet microscopes were not used very often, just for a handful of different applications, and the technique didn't really take off until 2004. Then the Stelzer Group at the Ember ignited a renaissance. And this work was the foundation for the collaboration of SAIS with Stelzer and team researchers and to start our commercial solution 
with the light sheet Z1, what is the predecessor of the light sheet 7? So let me talk you now um, step by step how we acquire the images. Most important when designing the light sheet, we started with the sample itself. So the microscope is built around the sample. Um, Agarose embedding has been shown as an ideal sample mounting method since it's very easy to prepare using common lab material. So um, the procedure is very easy to perform by just using a um, glass capillary, a plunger, and a low melt agarose. And um, the result is a sample shown here that is um, gently secured with minimal mechanical stress. And in the light sheet seven, the sample movement is fully software controlled and includes translation in all three dimensions so X, Y, and Z, as well as 360 degree rotation. Um, in order to maintain physiological conditions, the chamber has several access ports to allow media exchange. So you see here, this is a photo of a water chamber and you see here uh, four glass windows the front window um, to position the sample via the webcam and the door. Then we have the two side windows where the light sheet is coming into place. And from the back, there is um, the detection optics sitting. And um, you see here um, these um, opening ports that are plugged and they enable um, to uh, exchange uh, media or to also. Um, incubate um, the, uh, the volume inside the um, imaging volume with CO2. In addition, seen here by just a hole, but here you can place a Peltier um, element um, or incubation system that can be used either to heat or cool the chamber anywhere between 10 to 42 degrees. The chamber volume inside is about 25 mil which resists temperature fluctuations and provides stability. The chamber itself is uh, very easy to disassemble for cleaning and can even be autoclaved. Okay. Um, the next important feature on the Light Sheet 7 is the uh, complete freedom of rotation. Uh, so rotational ability provides freedom to choose either the ideal, ideal viewing perspective or can additionally include multi-view imaging to get complementary information from different viewing angles. You can see in this Drosophila embryo stacks the advantages of imaging with multiple angles. View number one here is the dorsal view and view number three is the ventral view. And in the middle here, you see a registered and multi-view fused data set so that all the information is then brought together in a single stack. Um, another feature is the dual-sided illumination in order to minimize light scattering artifacts for highest image quality. The light sheet seven can illuminate the sample from either the left or the right side. Here on top, you see how an image looks when it's illuminated from the left side. So here you see on the left part of this image, bright and sharp structures and the deeper the light sheet has to travel inside, um, the less information you get here and vice versa from the right side. With dual-sided illumination, the sample is illuminated from both sides and the information is combined into a single image. And this is either done in a post-processing step uh, um, after the images are required or online right away during image acquisition. So we all know where light is, there is shadow always. And when the sheet of light is passing through the sample, 
um, some structures such as nuclei or maybe pigments will absorb or scatter excitation light and cast a shadow along the illumination axis. This does occur, of course, with any microscope, not only on light sheet based systems. But here you can see immediately the effect um, because it's more noticeable with light sheet because the illumination axis is separate from the detection axis. The example image here on the right side uh, shows the resulting shadows that appear as horizontal stripes across the image. To overcome the shadowing effect, Lightsheet 7 uses patented pivot scanning technology to continuously rock the sheet in plane during acquisition. So the light sheet is not only scanned up and down, it's also brought into a certain angle um, onto the sample. This actively varies the angle of illumination to allow the excitation light to reach regions behind opaque structures. Uh, and, and gives also structures or dyes a chance to get illuminated that are behind these absorbing structures. So here on this image, you see now um, the same sample with the pivot scan turned on and the stripes um, almost disappear. I go one back that you see the effect. Here it's um, without pivot and here with the pivot scan turned on. Okay. Um, the Light Sheet 7 has a range of detection objectives that cover fields of view ranging from uh, tens of micrometer up to several millimeter. So there is here the 5x air objective and the 10x, 20x, and 40x dipping objectives. All objectives can be used with a continuously variable optical zoom that lets you zoom out to a factor of 0.4x or zoom up to an additional factor of 2.5x for further adjustment and fine tuning of magnification and field of view. Here on this slide, you see two stunning examples of long-term observation over several days. So here on the left side, there is a uh, time-lapse looking at the limb development, and this multi-view volume was acquired every 7.5 minutes over the course of four to five days. And on the right-hand side here, um, you see a, a, the structural development of an entire Arabidopsis flower at subcellular resolution over five days. And um, this very fast and gentle long-term imaging of fragile sample, this is possible due to dual cameras with very high sensitivity together with the environmental control of the incubation system, the gentle sample handling, and of course, also the gentleness of the light sheet technique itself. Um, so the, um, the example shown here is uh, plant imaging, um, what is uh, especially well suited in the Light Sheet 7 due to its horizontal concept, considering the gravity or natural growing direction of plants. And what you see is um, Arabidopsis thaliana root growth uh, acquired with the 20x objective, and in green you see a GFB signal, and in red, it's autofluorescent. Um, size light sheet systems have really excelled at imaging various samples, sample sizes, different applications. So it's possible um, uh, to, to image samples ranging from several microns up to a few millimeters. In general, um, as sample sizes increase, it becomes necessary to use optical clearing methods in order to permit light to penetrate deep into the tissue and avoid scattering. So thick samples tend to scatter light omnidirectionally. So in all directions, we get a light scatter. 
This means when light enters the sample traveling in this direction, um, doesn't continue um, and ends up to going off um, diffusely uh, all over in all directions. So what you see here, this example, this is an unpeared brain and placed on a newspaper or on a text, you see that it's not transparent and you cannot read the writing underneath. And um, yeah, remember that the refractive index describes the speed of light as it uh, travels uh, through a uh, particular medium. And uh, the larger the refractive index, the slower the light travels. Scattering is related to the number of refractive index transitions as light passes through a heterogeneous sample. So if you have several interfaces and several refractive index mismatches, you end up with high um, scattering. Clearing protocols aim to match the refractive index with the tissue. This in the tissue while maintaining its 3D architecture and also um, the fluorescent signal. After successful clearing, specimens allow light to travel through the tissue mostly unobstructed. And this is illustrated here. Um, so you see here the same sample as above, but now cleared and now we are able to uh, read the text underneath. For further reading and information, we recommend The Art of Tissue Clearing, uh, written by my colleague Jacques Paison. Um, with the new Light Sheet 7, we now have the flexibility to image in any refractive index in between 1.35 to 1.58. And this range covers all the popular clearing media that you see here. So there is a clarity cleared mouse brain shown here. There is a um, lymph node imaged in C3D. Here you see a mouse brain hemisphere imaged in nuclear. Here, this is a mouse trachea cleared with Pegasus. This one here is a mouse kidney cleared with eye disco and imaged in ethyl cinnamate. And here an axolotl limb cleared and imaged in ethyl cinnamate. So it's a, a bunch of uh, different um, clearing media um, possible. Uh, to achieve this remarkable flexibility, uh, the Light Sheet 7 has now redesigned optics that adjust to any uh, mentioned refractive index. And uh, the new illumination optics here, uh, they have an adjustable correction color. This is this um, silver ring, what you see. And uh, this enables um, to focus the sheet uh, in order to optimize optical sectioning capabilities. Um, in addition, we have new focusable detection objectives um, that offer a long working distance for imaging deep inside thick samples. So there is um, now 10.5 millimeter of available working distance for the 5X and 6.4 millimeter of working distance for the new 20X uh, designed for a refractive index of 1.53. Additionally, uh, the existing um, scale and clarity objectives can still be used with the new focusable illumination optics. The adjustable illumination and detection objectives are matched uh, with newly redesigned sample chambers shown here. Here you see the chamber, sample chamber large for a very, um, uh, for the, uh, in order to be used with the 5X. And um, this uh, is the other chamber to be used with the 20X clearing objective. Um, the inner dimensions um, can easily accommodate larger samples such as whole cleared mouse brains. And uh, both chambers now use window gaskets or O-rings that are resistant to solvents. Um, the chambers are easy to disassemble for cleaning. And uh, notice that, that both chambers, um, uh, they have some grooves on the top shown here. 
and here. And these grooves actually play an important role in a new automated sample loading routine of the Lightsheet 7. And this is explained on the next slide. So with the increased need, um, oh, sorry, this was. go back. So with the increased need to image ever larger samples, uh, determining the best way to load the sample can be a challenge. Um, we realized this and um, to address this issue, we came up with this new smart sample holder that was designed to simplify sample handling. So once a sample is secured in front of the sample holder, shown here, it can be inserted um, inside the chamber and um, inserted into the light sheet itself. And then there is an automated uh, loading routine. And the smart sample holder is now able to pick the sample automated like this. And all you need to do is uh, you just um, turn the handle to lock the sample in place. And then you are ready to start imaging. And this is really convenient and um, helps a lot to um, make the handling with bigger samples uh, much more easy. Okay, in order to expand the possibilities on the Lightsheet 7, we integrated intelligent third-party solutions. So there is um, image data processing and analysis as one major point. And uh, in addition to the uh, Zen Blue edition, uh, for um, data processing, uh, we added now Arrivis Vision 4D um, that brings uh, advanced features for um, processing and helps to deal with bigger sized uh, data sets. Then there is a large data storage and uh, processing capability, either by the improved size storage and analysis PC, or um, you can also combine this with the Aquifer Hive. Uh, we have a flexible sample holder design. So um, whatever um, different tailored adapter might be useful, um, you can 3D print it. And uh, I just uh, would like to mention here uh, the platform Thingiverse. And last but not least, um, there is mesoscopic imaging. So uh, to make our light sheet um, compatible with even larger specimens and low magnification imaging for high speed um, imaging, you can expand your system with the mesoscale imaging system from translucence biosystems. And an example is shown on the next slide. Um, so to get a quick overview, the entire brain was imaged with a 2.5x objective. And to see more details, um, uh, a higher um, resolution objective, so the 20x was used to, in order to see more finer structures. So this is the, um, the last slide of my presentation. I just would like to summarize all the features that I have mentioned. So um, the Lightsheet 7 offers incredible versatility for multi-view imaging of living and cleared specimen. So um, there, is a, there are large new chambers and the new smart sample holder that simplify the handling and mounting of uh, larger specimen. Uh, optics uh, are adjusted for any refractive index in between 1.33 up to 1.58 and provide the flexibility to image various live or cleared samples at low or high magnification. There are high quantum efficiency cameras to enable all over faster imaging with greater sensitivity for more gentle experiments. And the uh, robust box system design delivers more stability and uh, therefore also better image quality. And uh, with the easy to use Zen 3.1 and integration of third party hardware and software, we increase the productivity with efficient workflows. Uh, 